Hi, Paul Beckwith, University of Ottawa Laboratory for Paleoclimatology. What we're looking at here is with methane, we're, this is the difference between the observed northern polar, so the methane from 53 degrees to 90 degrees north, subtract the southern polar, the methane that is produced between 53 degrees and 90 degrees south. Okay, so about 140 ppb, this is in uh, parts per billion, um, and then that was in the 80s and 90s, and there seems to be a trend downwards. This is about 100 and slightly under 130. So not, not a huge difference, but what it means is, uh, you know, I guess I, how I would interpret this is, um, is that the emissions from Antarctica have been increasing slightly relative to emissions from um, the, the, the uh, Northern Hemisphere region or, you know, there's some other factors going on, but uh, anyway, there seems to be a trend there. Um, this is the, so what we have here is, this is 2012, this is methane PPB um, at the surface in different regions, okay? Uh, Inuvik Canada, Tixi Russia, so the different colors are all the different regions, and what you can see is Again, June, July, August, September, higher emissions. There's some spikes in different regions here um, year round. Okay, now if we just focus on um, August, so we take this August section and expand it. Okay, uh, this is what we have. This is the month of August, and you can see the emissions of methane and the levels going up 2150 part per billion here, you know, there's some spikes up to, the highest spike is like 23, 25 or so on in uh, Russia in this particular year. Okay, so this is just an example of some of the data that we can see. This is the diurnal or daily methane cycle at Bishoko, Canada, January and February. Okay, um, March, April, okay, so January, February, okay, this is the daily cycle, midnight to 0, 0, 0, 0 to 02400, okay, so you can see not much change here in January, February, remember it's pretty dark up there, okay, and then um, this is November, December, not much change, this is uh, March, April, there's some small, there's some fluctuation, a maximum here, maybe here. Um, and then uh, September, October peaks here. Um, and uh, May, June, okay, there's definitely peak here. And uh, July, August, look at the peak here in the morning, and then it drops off. So then you can try to explain these sort of things. Uh, maybe invert temperature inversions, uh, trapping, maybe the methane's trapped closer to the ground, and then you start getting vertical mixing during the day as the sun heats up, and uh, that causes it to drop. Things like that are going on. Um, this is the mean monthly amplitude of this signal. So how much does uh, methane change throughout the day? This is the daily hourly maximum minus the same day hourly minimum. And what you can see is some regions, you know, look at this region here, I guess it's uh, East Trout Lake, you have almost a 50 ppb um, change in the summer months, okay? Uh, 50 ppb, you know, uh, change, and this is throughout the, a day. So significant daily variation. And, uh, you know, it's mostly in the summer for these places. Okay, this is the methane PPB, um, how it varies, uh, you know, in different locations. It smoothed a little bit, um, 2011 to 2013, how you get these dips and uh, increases. So there is significant daily variation, hourly variation, monthly variation, year-to-year -year variation, complicating the picture, the, pic the, the uh, picture, okay. so. Okay, now here's some of the interesting movements of methane. So here we are in Inuvik, Inuvik, okay? This is 2001 to 2013. 
So this is the way, this is the prevailing wind patterns coming. So you measure methane here, where is it coming from? So 15% of the time the wind is on this trajectory, 10% of the time it's this trajectory and so on. The wind is coming from all different directions. Okay, the maximum is 22%, about a fifth of the time the wind is coming from this direction. So what you can do is you can cluster the data depending on the direction it's coming from. And this is January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. This is 2012 to 13. And you can see the levels of methane that you detect at your station um, depend, you know, in the different but you're breaking it down into the way, into the direction it's coming from. So here's a breakdown spatially showing you, um, this is when the wind is coming this way to the site. This is when the wind is coming this way to the site and so on. And you can get, these are the frequencies that it's happening. Okay, now you can do this for all these different places. So this is for alert now, this is for Barrow, and uh, you can plot the yearly variation of methane at the site, but you can break it down into depending where it's coming from. So the values are lower if it's coming from Greenland, for example. The highest would be the light blue area. So most, if the wind is coming this direction, that's when the values are highest. So it's coming right over the Eastern Siberian Arctic shelf and then coming across the values of the methane are higher at alert. Um, in this case, it's the bluish line, this line here, I guess. Can't really distinguish these two. Okay, um, and then this is some other places. So this is Shursky, uh, Shurskill, this is Palace. Um, and uh, so the green is pretty high here, coming, maybe it's coming from some industry or mining or something. Um, here, the red wind is for sure. It's coming straight up from Europe, okay? Um, the red winds for sure, and the smallest is the green coming across here. Um, okay, so this type of trajectory analysis can give you an idea, of, you know, when you measure methane at a site, where, where is it coming from? Why is there the variation? So here, um, you know, in, in Tixi, and uh, in Churchill. So here, you know, it's the green stuff. It's coming from the Chukki Sea and all the way across. That's when the levels are the highest. There's a couple more sites here. Um, so here, um, this is the light purple, and this is the blue here coming across here. Um, okay, so you can see where, where the methane's coming from. Now, this is a Tixie site. So what we're looking at is this is the methane in PPB that's measured here. Um, here it's coming from Western Siberia. You can identify where the spikes are. So there's fast sea ice in this region. There's melting here, open sea, freezing, fast sea ice. So this is the summer where the methane levels are higher. And this is the temperature of the topsoil. Um, you know, as a fun, over the year. So here the topsoil is warmer, there seems to be more methane emissions, etc. Um, this is uh, some other um, methane concentrations that are measured, and this is relative to the wind direction. So now, if the wind's blowing from this way, it's higher. This is coastal wetlands are, 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 are uh, upwind. Um, and uh, continental Siberia, you know, the methane levels are lower, Laptev C, Laptev C, right? So depending on which way the wind is blowing, the data is portrayed this way. Really interesting stuff. Now, the other way you can tell is from isotopes, okay? So carbon-12, carbon-14 is the radioactive isotope of carbon. You need sunlight and it's, an, it's, it's the active Form. There's so much carbon-14 in, in living plants and animals, etc. As soon as they die, okay, the carbon-14 is not being updated and produced. So it decays to carbon-13, okay? Um, and this is, uh, so if the, if the, uh, so the, the level, the amount of carbon-13 gives you an isotopic signature of, of uh, the source of this stuff. 
but it's a rough idea. So if you have, um, so if you have, let's go to here. So if you have, if you burn biomass and boreal vegetation, there's, there's very little time for the carbon-14 to decay into carbon-13. So there's not much carbon-13, okay? This number is relatively high, okay? If it's from hydrates or thermocast lakes, it's minus 55. It's much, much lower because the decay process has gone on longer. Um, okay, so this is... Yeah, so, okay, so, and these are ruminants and cows and natural gas and the coal industry and so on. There's been lots, okay, so there's lots and lots of decay, so these numbers are higher. Um, the carbon-13 is, is much higher. Again, here it hasn't had much time to um, decay, so the numbers are, um, I'm, I think I'm maybe mixing this up, but, Anyway, the point is, is from this number here, you can identify some of the sources, very sort of in broad brush strokes. Okay, so this is the del-13 carbon, um, in, uh, part, that's part per hundred, okay? Um, part per thousand, rather, it's not percent, it's mils, okay? Uh, so high precision measurements, um, different sites, and you can see how the fluctuation is over the years of the isotopic signature. Um, this is alert here, um, and uh, up, upper methane concentrations lower is the isotope record. So, so this gives you an idea, along with the trajectory analysis, of what is, where the methane source, where is the methane uh, derived from. Um, there's also some modeling done, um, for example, uh, you know, you combine, this is like combining, this is a hybrid model where you enter all the data, you do the modeling as to where the uh, trajectories were, and then uh, you, you kind of go around in this loop. So you do your measurements, you optimize them, you adjust the emissions, and what you're trying to do is you, you measure the total concentration and you're trying to find out what emissions cause that and where they're from, you know, rice field, permafrost, animals, etc. Okay, so then you can get these type of maps here. So from the methane measurements globally, you can try to go and find out where the sources are using this, uh, using this uh, mathematical technique. Okay, and again, these are some of the sources. Um, from multiple inverse model studies of the Arctic region, 60 to 90, okay. <coughs> so a lot from wetlands. Some from biomass burning, not much. Anthropogenic, quite a bit, okay. But it's mostly wetlands here. These are the total emissions. Um, this is teragrams of methane per year. <coughs> so as we get to a darker Arctic, less sea ice, less snow cover, very, very wavy jet streams, bringing a lot of water vapor up there. It's getting a lot wetter up there. We're getting a lot more wetlands. That's where the methane seems to be coming from um, for the most part now. Okay, um, this is the teragrams of methane per year as a function of uh, latitude, 40 south, 80 north. You can see how, you know, how this is zero degrees. This is the equator. But because of the uh, inter the, the uh, interconvergence ITCZ intertropical convergence zone, it's shifted. Um, so you can see, you know, the, where where the bulk of the methane is being produced from wetlands at the equator. Um, this is how it changes with latitude, and so on. So you can get more and more stuff. I, I there's a lot more details that are in this report, and. Uh, I think I've saturated you probably with enough information now. Um, so you can, uh, you know, again, this is different locations and how it varies throughout the year. So I guess the key points are, I'm going to stop here, I think. The key points are that there's a lot of um, variation daily, weekly, monthly, yearly with methane. Thank you.